What's up, little buddy? What the? That looks like... It looks like ick. That Ryukin looks like it's got ick. got a case of ick. But I noticed this morning when I was wiping the glass and feeding these fish that the tips of the fish's fins have small white dots. That's very early stages of ick in the aquarium. Luckily I caught it at an early stage. That's a healthy habit you want to get into. When you're feeding your fish, when you're scrubbing the glass, when you're doing water changes, you also want to observe your fish. Like this is one of my favorite guys right here. This is my Aranda that I beloved. Um, he's just got the perfect body shape. But while I'm looking at him, I see that he's got all these little white dots on his fins. So in this video, I want to take this opportunity and tackle Ick, have you guys experience it with me, teach you on how to defeat Ick, and show you guys that it's not something to panic over. Let's dive in. So I probably don't really have to go and get medication for my fish at this stage in the progression of ick. Ick is not as scary as it seems to be and we're going to dive into what is ick and how to treat ick and the life cycle of ick and why people have fears of it. There's a lot, a lot, there's a lot, a lot. Of, there's a lot of misconceptions of ick as well and we're going to talk about that. But for right now, I got to drive over to the local fish store. get my medication for my little goldfish that I truly beloved. Let's hope I don't walk out with something else like another fish. <laughs> uh, you know how it is. Going straight to the medication aisle. So there's red ick and ick attack. I like ick attack. What the difference is is very slight. I might leave it in the description below. But so I managed to get out of there without buying any fish. <laughs> Uh, we people have a serious problem. I went ahead and I got my ick medication. Honestly, I believe that my fish in this stage, the progression of ick, they truly don't need it. Come on, people, learn to drive. But I want to make sure that my fish have the best fighting edge of defeating the ick parasite. One thing to understand is that ick is always present on all of your fish. It doesn't matter if it's fresh water, salt water, if it's been quarantined, if you've medicated, if you're using UV sterilizers. I don't care what you're using, what you dose, fish always have to a degree of ick always on them. It is a matter of their immune system if their bodies can keep it under control. Once their immune system falls, now that might be due to bad water quality, uh, stressed out by either water conditions or other fish in the aquarium. The aquarium might not be set up correctly to house this type of fish, might be too small, might not be deep enough. Whatever the matter is, if the immune system drops in the fish, that's usually when you see bad things outbreak. For example, we have viruses inside of our body, we have sicknesses, but it's a matter if our bodies can keep it under control. When our immune system drops, either that be due to stress or some kind of lack of sleep or so, you know what I'm trying to say. Whatever causes your immune system to drop, that's when you get the effects of sickness. One of the butterflies that I've had quarantined for over a month, I introduced him into the 75 gallon. He was going to go outside this spring into a pond that I'm going to be working on later on this year. That fish, out of nowhere, died and was caught on the Aquion 5575 hang on the backs intake. Now, what caused the death of that fish? I don't know because I quarantined that fish. Uh, 
eating very well every day, several times a day, excellent water qualities, didn't come down with anything like dropsy or anything like that. Honestly, I think it was just a matter of genetics. I'm pretty positive that did foul the water, and in fact, it probably led to the immune system drop of some of the fish, leading to ick outbreak. So now that I'm pretty sure on what caused the ick outbreak, let's dive in and tackle this stuff and get it under control. So ick actually has three different stages of its life cycle. And I'm going to break this down very easy so beginners can understand this. And you more experienced can also take something from it. So this is kind of like what came first, the chicken or the egg. When ick is introduced into your aquarium or triggered by immune system drop, it's usually free floating or sometimes it is attached to your fish. Like I said, I believe ick is always present on a fish no matter what. It's just a matter if their immune system can keep up with it. But most of the time, ick is introduced in your aquarium when you've introduced new fish, new plants, uh, contaminate your tank water with water from the pet store or another tank. Basically what happens is the free floating stage of ick has a short lifespan and that all depends on the water temperature. The higher the water temperature, the shorter the lifespan. That's where the misconception of warmer water will kill ick. It's not really killing ick, it's just speeding the life cycle up. So if you have more forgiving fish that are from the Amazon regions that can take warmer waters, you definitely want to increase your temperature. But I believe with treating ick, it's a three legs to a table medication, good quality food, and then temperature. Like I'm doing now, I'm medicating. This is going to eradicate the little spores in the water column. It's not really going to target the fish's parasite that's on the, the body, but it's going to basically target all those little free floaters. So once the ick dies off on the fish's body, there's not going to be new ick that can reattach itself to the existing fish. Medication is going to play its own part, but you're going to have to do everything you can to give the fish a fighting edge. I believe that good quality food is essential. This should be a daily practice though. I don't believe you should go cheap on food. I feed my goldfish Microlyph and New Life Spectrum and Spiralina. I also feed them duckweed every couple of days from my 125 gallon planet tank. Now by this part in the video you guys are probably wondering where the heater is. Now like I was talking before, temperature the higher it is will increase the overall life cycle rate of the ick. The higher the temperature, the shorter the lifespan. So with goldfish, in cooler waters, it's going to take longer to eradicate the ick, unfortunately. So if you have an Amazonian tank, such as Oscars, Angelfish, Discus, this is actually a really good thing if you actually get ick because these fish are used to warmer waters, so you can jack up the heat a little higher than usual. But even if you don't have Amazon fish, you can always increase the temperature a little bit. Do the research on your personal fish in your aquarium and know how much heat and cool they can actually take. Fish do go through seasons in the wild, but then again, in an aquarium, they're, they're so used to stable parameters, any swings can be stressful and sometimes they can lead to bad things. So do your research before you play around with the temperature fluctuation. But the main reason I'm refraining from putting the heater on this aquarium and gradually increasing the water temperature is because it's going to encourage spawning. I've got a lot of mature fish in this aquarium. The male Aranda and the male Ryukin are constantly chasing some fish, even in cooler water. The temperature in this tank always stays around 68 degrees. In this cool water, they're still chasing the fish. They're not spawning, but they're chasing. So the second I increase water temperature, I know that's going to encourage spawning. And even though the odds of any babies surviving to swimming stages with all these fish in the aquarium are slim, let's just say hypothetically it happened. With ick in the aquarium right now, it's not a good time to raise fry. I do have some plans in the future, perhaps in the early spring, mid-spring, where I am thinking about breeding some of these fish. I'm very curious to see what the male Ryukin, the big Ryukin, and the female butterfly, which is the biggest butterfly in this aquarium, they've been chasing each other a lot, and I'm very curious to see what their offspring would look like. So that's something I might be tackling in the springtime. The next thing I want to talk about is quarantine tanks. Now, this is a topic that has a video all for itself. And this is a very controversial topic. 
There's a lot of different opinions out there, so hear me out. No two systems are the same. What I'm about to disagree with might work for your application or your fish or your aquarium. I believe that a quarantine tank is a good habit to practice in certain cases. Before introducing a fish to your main aquarium, I don't mean have the fish in there for a couple of days. Let that fish get established in that aquarium and let it stay in there for however long you think it is to be necessary in order for you to be comfortable putting that fish in your main tank. Quarantine tanks should also be seeded and cycled. Quarantine tanks should also have some kind of sense of security for your fish. So many people take fish from their thriving tanks and they put them in a bare bottom with no decoration, no hiding spots, no media in the filters, sometimes just an air stone. If it's a light bio load, sometimes that can work. But my point is, is you're taking a fish from its home and then you're putting it into a shock. The fish's immune system is already down and you're basically trying to drop that immune system even more because you're moving the fish from tank to tank and stressing it out. Now, like I said, no two systems are the same. Maybe it's a rare case. Maybe you need to take this fish out. But the case of the matter is, the ick is already in your aquarium. Unless you have sensitive invertebrates or corals or whatever it might be, there's many variables. That's why I said early on, hear me out because no two systems are the same. But it's probably better for you, if possible, to dose the entire aquarium. Treat the entire aquarium. There's no need of taking the fish out and putting the fish back in. I think that can do more harm than good. But once again, not in all cases. I also went to the grocery store and I picked up a clove of garlic for 51 cents. I pinched it off and peeled it and cleaned it under the sink and I let it free float in the aquarium. This is going to do two things. It's going to boost the appetite of my fish and if I can remember correctly, I'll put the chemical name on the video, but garlic actually releases a chemical that it is not found of. It ick does not like it at all it actually can deteriorate the ick and give your fish a better chance of fighting it off so i really wanted to bring a video where we went from the beginning of ick and all the way to the end where the fish were clear of ick that's why i didn't bring a video in the last two weeks because the fish still had ick and i was still producing this video as you guys can see the appetite in the fish are back it never really deteriorated because i caught it early on but I've been dosing, I've been medicating, I've been treating, I've been doing water changes, everything I can except for raising the temperature, but we talked about that in the past. It would take me a few more weeks to eradicate ick from this tank completely. So that's why I'm gonna release this video today because the ick still has a few more stages in its life cycle to go. And in, like I said early on in the video, I believe ick is always prominent in your fish or on your fish. It's a matter of if their immune system can suppress it or not. So bottom line, ick can return to this aquarium. And in six months in, this was the first season of tribulation in my aquarium, but we didn't panic. We knew what to do and we dug our heels in and we fought it. And unfortunately, if you don't know what to do, this is what this video is intended for. This is why I made it. Luckily, we have a community that we didn't have in the past. The internet is definitely advancing our hobby or pet keeping. There's a lot of different people out there that have quality views and experience on these type of things. All you have to do is type it into Google, type it into YouTube, make sure your source is qualified and take it step by step. There's nothing you really can't tackle without the guidance of others. So that's what's good about our community, guys. I hope this video has brought you some insight and maybe prepared you for future events to come into your aquarium. If this video helped you or taught you anything, definitely hit that like and subscribe button. I'll see you guys next Sunday with a brand new video. Comment, rate, and subscribe. Later.